It's another episode of Wearable Today, episode number 97, the angel number. Today, we're going to talk about VR. Is it a fad or is it going to be something that's the future for wearable technology? We've got a lot of great news today. We're going to talk about Apple. We're going to talk about 5G and we're going to talk about a whole bunch more. Got Luke Wallace here. Got Birdie here. Got you here. Now it's time to get the show going. So let's get started on this episode of Wearable Today. And of course, Wearable Today is brought to you by our friends over at CashFly. Go over to C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y.com for more information. And of course, we're a proud member of the Maker Max community over at max.maker.com. Hey, everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from geekazine.com. Think Magazine, put in a geek. Boom, like you hear, and there's the uh, lower third right there. And of course, you are on Wearable Today. Jeff at Wearable Today. And as always, my co-hosts in crime, the man with the bird and the plan, the plan with the bird and the man, Mr. Luke Wallace. Hey, everybody. Luke Wallace here. You can find me on Twitter, Luke Luca. You can find me on Instagram, Luke Luca. Uh, YouTube, I'm youtube.com slash Luke Wallace. Uh, Google Plus, google.com slash plus. That's the symbol plus, Luke Wallace. What about and Birdie's here. And Birdie, yeah. Exactly. Plus Birdie. So... Plus birdie. Plus birdie. All right, let's get into the news for the day in the little seg- segment we call Big News Little Arms. <laughs> birdie wouldn't let you grab the cup. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Didn't let me do the, uh, all the stuff like I normally do. Okay, so up first, Apple has never released any of their sales numbers for the Apple Watch. What? Nope. They haven't done it, okay. but that's not stopping analysts from taking an educated guess. Jason Lowe at Canalyst says that Apple sold over 5 million Apple Watches in the fourth quarter of 2015, bringing total sales over 12 million for the year. Uh, this would make Apple the market leader in smartwatches if those numbers are accurate. Although this wouldn't overshadow the 37 million band devices, things like the Fitbit or Jawbone or Fuel Band or any of those other kind of band, you know, fitness trackers that were sold in 2015. And Fitbit has the comfortable lead in all of those devices. But nobody beats the Who or Led Zeppelin or Rush. Those are some good bands. Yeah, this is a different battle of the bands. Um, uh, I probably should have made that more clear. Okay. All right. Well, different band. Cool stuff. So let's move yeah. on. Yeah. All right. Well, will 5G change wearables? Well, that's right. The successor to 4G is already in discussion. Well, actually, they're discussing 5G. They're probably discussing 6G as well and, and the future of the uh, of the airwaves coming up. And this is the sign for airwaves. I don't know. So anyway, um, Verizon, AT&T are in discussion. Hope to have lower latency, faster speeds, and even smaller devices. Because if this is 4G... This will be 5G, something like that. We're we're talking. It, it's it's not going to be like a okay, a little bit. It's going to be a big jump, and you know, which is great for any type of mobile device out there. Um, it can mean very big changes for wearables out there and storing information. Um, you, everything could be up on a cloud drive and access information from anywhere. Towers getting stronger um, without having. <clears throat> excuse me, having. Uh, having to put new towers on or anything like that. Early AT&T field tests uh, could actually be happening in Austin um, by the end of the year. But of course, this will be internal tests that require uh, new hardware upgrades. They'll still use the same towers, but they'll probably have to put in some sort of new technology in there and go from there. If you want to read more on that, we got the article over at techtimes.com. Many fitness brands have bought up software products to expand their lineup and increase their marketing reach. And now RunKeeper joins the list. ASICS has purchased RunKeeper to bring the two fitness brands closer together and provides ASICS the ability to communicate directly with RunKeeper's 45 million users. Wired uh, has more thoughts about how this might impact uh, the future of both brands and reminds us that Under Armour uh, bought MyFitnessPal, and Adidas has Runtastic. 
So thus far, all these brands have been interoperable where it doesn't matter what app or what, you know, shoes or, you know, whatever you buy, you can kind of use any, you know, any combination of them that you want. But perhaps soon we might just see start, you know, more division as the brands start to try to build an ecosystem around a singular point. Speaking of Under Armour, Kevin Plank, the CEO of Under Armour, met with Fortune Magazine last week to talk about the Super Bowl, their athletes, the wearable technology. Uh, in the 23-minute interview, the uh, the he discussed the incredible growth that the growth that they've seen, how tracking uh, your own biometrics is the wave of the future, and much more. He's very excited about the future of wear tech, as we all are, and the, uh, and the value of the Under Armour can provide the uh, aggregating uh, all the data that people are collecting through devices like Health Box. Watch the whole interview. Hear the passion of the person in charge of the entire company over on Fortune.com. Yeah, that was a really uh, interesting article uh, or interview um, with that guy. Um, I will say, like it, it definitely gives you some insight into how Under Armour thinks and how yeah. uh, this uh, the CEO thinks of like it's not just about selling you a, a better shirt or you know a, a nicer you know pair of shoes or whatever. Uh, he he really sees it as a way that they can provide a lot of value by um, having so many users on board. Well, if you think about it, I mean, uh, th that's the idea of a CEO is to be able to look a couple of years in the future and say, this is where we're going to be and this is where things are. Being a CEO and a futurist, good idea, because, uh, and, and I think that Under Armour is doing the right thing because of the fact that they're looking that far into the future, knowing that maybe things aren't going to be successful right now, but in a couple of years... It's just going to be awesome. Simple as yeah, that. and they can definitely own that space. Like no one has that locked up where you know there's just one brand you think of and that's it. Yeah. Um, but Under Armour, I think, is trying to position themselves as that brand of go to Under Armour and they can um, you know they can provide you the data. They can help you understand the data that you're looking at. So uh, yeah, really, really uh, interesting interview. It's hard to summarize a 23 minutes yeah. of uh, <laughs> discussion down into 30 seconds. So. Uh, oh, yeah, I, 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 I tried to watch as much as I could, but, you know, he uh, definitely had to skip through. But you're absolutely right. So, yeah, it's real good. It's real good. So anyway, finally, in in our news segment, Mobile World Congress is next week. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yep. We've got a, a link to an article over at TechCrunch that looks at some of the wear tech that's coming from the conference. Uh, we know Samsung will be debuting the Galaxy S7, their new flagship uh, phone. Uh, LG will unveil the G5, latest in that series, and there'll be lots of VR from both HTC and Samsung. Obviously, they'll be uh, you know pushing those products. So even BlackBerry, that's right, BlackBerry, say, will what? have some say announcements. What? Say what? Exactly, BlackBerry. They may be going a little bit more Android, and so everyone's going to be interested to see what comes out of that. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm, I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens happens with the VR. Um, and, and of course, Samsung, the S7, not only the S7, but the S7 Edge is going to be uh, debuted. Uh, that's what we're guessing. And they might, they might debut Big Bird for all we know. Um, but uh, that's, that's what the guesses are. I really like it if they had a Big Bird debut. Yeah, Birdie. You'd, would you want a Big Bird debut? Okay. <laughs> She's like, hmm. I guess so. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that is our big news. Little arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a it's been a fun week, I guess. How, how's how's your week been going, uh, Luke? Uh been going good. Um Oh, not a lot of wear tech. Uh, trying to figure out some technology for upgrading the house, um, replacing, um, like not, unfortunately, not a lot of high tech stuff, but um, things like upgrading our bathroom, putting down uh, some new tile and uh, doing some things like that that we're looking at um, doing uh, while we're away on our, our upcoming trip. Uh, it'll be interesting. We're going to try to use that opportunity to let, let some work happen around the house while we don't have to be here to deal with it. So. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely uh, get to get the people in there so you can, you're not in the way and you're not 
going, no, that's wrong. I know yeah, I do that. Well, so. And yeah, it's less, yeah, it interrupts us a lot less because, you know, we're not here anyway. So yeah, he doesn't have to, you know, they don't have to clean up at the end of the day to try to leave it in a reasonable state and all that kind of stuff. They can just leave the mess and come back to it tomorrow. Well, that's cool. So how's a C3PO build going? Slowly, slowly. I would say uh, starting to get some funds together. I've got a tax refund uh, on the way. So that'll be, um, that'll be good. That'll probably help out with that. Um, assuming I can get all the parts together, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're still, still in part parts acquisition phase. So uh, of course they announced, they announced uh, that they started shooting uh, episode eight today. Yep. Um, yep. And then of course they announced, uh, well, they didn't announce it just now, but uh, everybody knows in December we're getting another star Wars movie. Um, and it is called rogue something rogue one rogue one um, that's right yeah they they announced it uh a year or so ago as the first star wars movie that will not be showing uh the lives of the skywalker family yeah which if you think about it and so those are those episodic ones so these, they're calling these anthology movies um but yeah i i think i mentioned that on a, a few shows back when um star wars was, was launching but Everyone will know about it come summertime when the, <laughs> the marketing machine really kicks into full gear. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it'll like, be coming out d- this December and then episode eight next December. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's going to be Star Wars coming for a long time. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I, I was looking at the, t- uh, the 50 most anticipated movies that are coming this year. Um, of course, the big one, uh, well, Dead, we went to see Deadpool on Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was a perfect Valentine's Day movie. Um, it's really and, a romance. Oh yeah, very romantic. It was it was awesome. Ryan Ryan Reynolds, um, but it was a great, great, great movie um, for it being rated R. I'm I'm kind of kind of saying that it's the uh, it's the this is forty uh, the same aspect of the 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 movie. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the forty year old virgin. Um, when that first came out, it was just this Judd Apatow movie kind of uh, push limits. And mm-hmm. now we've got Deadpool that's that's taking that same idea and throwing it into a Marvel uh, area. It's just uh, it's amazing. And my Siri just went off for some reason. Mm. That's weird. Well, anyway, so uh, it just it just went off. It didn't even touch a button. That's crazy. Anyway, the whole point is that uh, um, it was it's a great movie. And of course, the box office is just completely smashed through for a rated R movie. I can't take your yeah. kids to it. But definitely uh, one to go see. So, um, but anyway, uh, the other ones: uh, uh, Captain America: Civil War. That one's supposed to be uh, supposed to blow away the water when it comes to that part of the Marvel universe. Um, Batman and Superman, which now they're starting to say is not that great, but we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. And Pete's Dragon will be coming out later this year, which I was pretty amazed. So, mm, okay. You remember, it's a remake? Yeah. It's, you never saw Pete's Dragon? No, I saw it. I'm wondering why they would remake it. but Because they can? I don't know. Mm, they're out of ideas. Somebody yeah, somebody was... wanted to make it, so they're making it. That's that's how that works, I guess. So I guess. Somebody, <laughs> somebody got the money. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, it the, is it the standard gritty reboot of the old 80s family classic? They the... have not put out any trailers that I know of mm. yet. So I don't know. Oh yeah, and Ghostbusters. I mean, we're gonna. That's mm. wearable tech right there. Maybe maybe we should oh, get yeah. some of the some of the the crew on to talk about the wearable tech for uh, Ghostbusters. I think so, and I think you could write off the tickets as uh, research. Mm, not a bad idea. Mm. So, all right. Well, for me, like I said, Deadpool. Uh, did you do anything for Valentine's Day with your? Uh, with your wife? Not really. Um, I did cook dinner. Okay. That was nice. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, we've been mostly uh, just kind of working on this uh, house remodel stuff. It's been kind of our our gift to each other for okay. uh, this year. Not that not that the house is the gift. Yeah. Well, so, that was last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gee, I guess I need to get myself a new house. So. Yeah. But. <laughs> No, we had a we had a fun. We went to, went to see the movie, and then later that day, we mm. uh, Jennifer, she loves yoga, so we went to this restorative yoga thing, which is not like cool. conventional yoga, because it's not like 
do downward dog and then do super eagle and then do flock of seagulls and then whatever it was um it you just kind of sat there and you did more meditation than anything and then you, you lied in a position and then and i could actually do it which was which was pretty cool so and those places are hot i mean the the the, the temperature of the room is just crazy crazy humid crazy hot um and you know it was like very cold yesterday it's we're gonna start on this warming trend and i wasn't expecting to go into a room where it was like humid like like midsummer mm -hmm. or something like that so of course that's probably like that down in dallas already for you right uh not quite the weather is warming up a little bit but we might get another cold snap before uh spring comes it's hard to say really yeah so well even in spring and summer you can always get a cold snap that's for sure so mm. All right. Well, let's move on here. Uh, let's. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let's. Uh, where Where do you find us? Uh, you want to know where to find us? Wearable today for Twitter. Wearable today for Facebook. This week in glass for YouTube. Uh, you can go there. You can subscribe to those channels and go from there. Um, bandwidth buzz uh, from our friends over at Cashfly over at c a c h e f l y dot com. Great way for you to put your podcast on if you if you're putting together an app or if you got a website you need a CDN to uh, port your pictures or maybe even cache your pages because this is always a good idea to have your cached pages on another server so if your main website goes down the cached pages take over and uh, they don't see they see a seamless front end so with cashfly um, you can get yourself then and they have great deals here and you can get up to a, a try out or one terabyte uh, for free uh, you got a 14 day free trial so go over to cachefly.com for more information uh, deals over on WearTech over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. You can find yourself uh, lots of great things uh, like uh, Samsung uh, Gear Fits, uh, Garmin uh, activity monitors, uh, the Dubs acoustic filters, and so much more. Uh, these are great, uh, great products that may, may have been returned. Some have been refurbished or, you know, like the band broke or something like that and they had to fix it or, or something simple like that. Um, of course, they're all certified. I get a lot of wearable technology this way because it's cheaper to do um, and some great prices on there. So go over to wearabletoday.com forward slash deals for that. And then, of course, Luke. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, you can tip us over at paypal.me forward slash Jeff Powers um, and go from there. But Luke. You can also get a great deal on some wear tech over at bigleathershirt.com. Use coupon code wear tech for 10% off. All right. And there's free shipping on every order. So it's just basically the price of the shirt plus tax if applicable in your area. All right. You get, uh, did you get any orders from last week? I have not gotten any wear tech orders from last week. Bummer. Oh, well. We'll, we'll try. Some, you know, somebody have to order something. Basketball so. and the, the madness of the March will be coming up very, very soon, and you'll need a shirt with a letter on it. Yeah, when you could spell out your favorite team, you could spell out your favorite player. Exactly. Lots of great ideas. Exactly. You could you could say one and say I'm number one. You know, mm -hmm. do, do you have the number? Do you have the pound sign as one of the letters? Not yet. I think eventually I'm gonna have to get that added in. But. Oh yeah, because I I put number on the back of my and then I put one on the front. That would mm -hmm. be kind of cool. So anyway, but anyway, you can go to BigLettershirt.com. Use the code WearTech. All right, yep. let's uh, let's move on. Are you ready to upgrade your thermometer? Luke? In what way? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that's what Flow is all about trying to do. It's a simple heat reading device, and that can it can not only tell you your temperature via pointing the device at your head, it can also uh, cr uh, create a series of memories so you can keep track of your child's health. Um, you know, so when when Junior is like 18, you can pull out the scrapbook and go, remember when you had the flu? Or whatever. Um, yeah, but it does more because then you can, sh you can show that to your doctor and you can show that to other people. You can progress. So if, if, if things get way worse, 
then you've got a timeline of that. So it does a little bit more than just be a social media uh, marker right there. But the cool thing about this is it, you just basically point it at a like like at the forehead and it'll read the heat. So if you're uh, warming up a bottle of formula or something like that, you can actually point the thermometer there and just press a button and it'll say if it's too hot, too cold or just right. And uh, and of course, track everything on your mobile device. And the prices are pretty good, too. Uh, I think it was like, uh, well, they had the uh, first two levels were already sold out, but then it was like $23, $24. You could get yourself uh, one of these uh, Flow uh, uh, smart thermometers. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, I mean, I, I've used those kind of contactless uh, thermometers on actually the big letter shirt uh, when I've been... Uh, when I'm checking the heat of a uh, heat plate I use on a heat press. So um, I understand that technology, but having it connected, being able to log that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good. Well, the cool thing about it is when you do have a kid, then you'd already have flow and you could check your big letter shirts on with using flow and you, and you could check your child or you could check yourself. See if, yeah, I got a fever. I can't do the show today, Jeff. Yeah, I I don't know if this one uh, gets up. Does it does it support up to uh, 375 degrees? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's like mm, may, maybe not. They probably that may be outside the standard operating range for it. Just a little bit. We could hack into it. I don't know. I, I you know I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, because they they did say you know check your formula and stuff like that. So maybe check the boiling water. Or or anything like that, turning it yeah. into a regular. It could, it could definitely have a couple hundred degrees in there. Yeah, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised on that. So we'll we'll definitely look on it. But uh, um, yeah. So uh, but uh, anyway, twenty three days to go on that uh, on that project. Uh, I was thinking of backing it. What What are your thoughts? Should we Should we uh, Should we throw money at it? Mm, since I don't have a child, it would probably not get as much use i know it, it could be used on an adult but um i probably would again kind of wait for it to come out and uh see what the okay you do have a, you do have a bird is. by the way i do have a bird but i really don't know what temperature birdie should be at all the time so and so what if B, birdie gets sick you, you don't know how to tell if it's has a fever no okay i can just tell from if birdie's you know how birdie's feeling all right so. birdie how you feeling sleepy sleepy <laughs> birdie's got his eyes closed <laughs> look at that tweet tweet, tweet. oh no no i'm i'm awake i'm awake <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right well let's move on from there let's go to our uh, new segment we called 3d printed which i still don't have an intro for yet um and oh, oh yeah this is the intro for 3d printed Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, always, always. Uptown uh, funk. Uptown funk going <laughs> to um, get to you. Um, so yeah. anyway, uh, if you're standing while at work, uh, it's a tough gig. I, I I had a few jobs where I stood uh, for the eight hours and, and my legs tired, tired as all could be. And then I'd still have to walk home because, you know, I was 16 and working in an ice cream parlor. But I, I got to eat all the ice cream that I wanted to. Uh, so it wasn't as much of a tough gig, but it's still tough. You know, uh, fatigue continually works against you, and 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 positions such as doctors uh, need to keep be able to keep sharp, especially when you're when you're scooping ice cream. I'll tell you something: mm -hmm. you got to be on your game, or else you're scooping chocolate when you're supposed to be scooping strawberry. And you want to be on your game when it comes to stuff like that. So that's why a team of Japanese researchers are working on a wearable chair called Achilles, or walkable chair. Um, and that's what's in the picture here. Let me go back to the picture. Um, this, uh, you basically strap that on your legs and that becomes a wearable chair. The idea is for the doctor to strap into the device and support the m leg muscles. Of course, this uh, has many other applications for jobs, which requires long times of standing. Um, it might also be very good for a person like a hunter, um, fisherman or something like that, uh, who basically are, are trying to be as still as possible. Uh, I don't know if this... Achilles also helps with your balance or anything like that. But, I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I suppose with the right type of weight management on the device um, and how the uh, how the feet plant down, you could probably get a more stable version as well. 
And uh, but for a doctor, they could be you could relax while you're doing a 14 hour brain surgery or whatever, whatever, you know, because some of these surgeries, they take all hours to do. Mm -hmm. And so if you're on that table, you want that doctor to be in their prime shape. Um, just like if you want to do your, your banana split, you want it to have, you know, <laughs> vanilla in the vanilla side and the chocolate in the chocolate side and the strawberry in the strawberry side. And, uh, and the best part is you can take that with you. So you can kind of walk around from what I understand with this. Yeah. It's how they make it look is how you can actually walk and then somehow either just crouch and it'll kind of support you, or maybe there's some way to turn on the sitting mode for it, but whatever it is, it. Um, yeah, it looks like it's meant to be portable where you don't have to like get into it and out of it. Um, cause at that point you might as well just have a stool or something to sit on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, but anyway, so it, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, um, and of course it's, it's going through the 3d print. So I'm wondering if they're going to have, um, the 3d models out there for other people to try and print to improve upon. Uh, I don't think it, there might be one joint. Um, actually, it does have. To, it does look like there's two joints in there, uh, and I'm talking joints as in as in limbs, joints. These joints. Yeah. So yeah, um, flexes a little bit. Fle so yeah, it'll flex a little bit. But I'm also guessing that they've got to worry about. Uh, they've got to actually customize it for the person that's using the device, because um, uh, you know, I'm five ten and a half. You're I don't know how tall are you. How tall are you, Luke? Five ten and a half. Wow, that's no. crazy. Uh, no. Like five nine, five ten, somewhere in that range. Okay. So. so, and some people are taller, some people are shorter, and some people. But are, not here. Not We're here. all the same yeah. here. <laughs> We're close. We're close enough. So, but anyway, uh, pretty cool stuff, and uh, in three D printed technology. Anything to add to this? Uh, no, I think uh, yeah, really neat, really neat, and yeah, I think it would be interesting if uh, people could start three D printing things like that themselves. Um, Okay. It'd cool. be cool. Yeah, definitely. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, I think that, yeah, that just leaves us for our, uh, our, our, our main subject here. And it's uh, VR headsets, fat or future. Mm -hmm. that, it, it sounds so generic there. VR headsets, fat or future. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was inspired on this article, which is over on gizmag.com. Uh, the rumored standalone VR headset from Google probably isn't what you're imagining, um, which uh, they, they basically talk about. You know, it's basically going to be its own device. So you're not going to put a smartphone in it. You're not going to hook it up to a computer. It's just going to be its, its own device, which is pretty cool. Now, Google is working on standalone VR headset, which is, you know, once again, mobile device to keep you unwired from your uh, and keep your phone battery full. Best part that is we know that it can be done with quad core processing and high end mobile graphics. Uh, you could, can take a phone and turn it into a VR headset. That's pretty easy. The real question is, will people buy into the idea? Now, our buck Munster Fuller said humanity is acquiring uh, humanity is acquiring all the right technology for all the wrong reasons. After all, we almost ditched the. Uh, ditch the main reason why we have a cell phone simply because of the fact we can text, we can Facebook and we can play smart jewels for zombies uh, or whatever <laughs> game is going to come out next month. In the meantime, yeah. uh, I hear it's called. is what I don't think that's what it's called. It is what it's called. That's I have okay. it right here. Stop interrupting me. Okay. Where was I? Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. In the meantime, I <laughs> hear, man, Anyway, uh, so in the meantime, I hear how people want an iPad and they just can't justify the $399 price tag. Um, even even a $299 used one, uh, they, they uh, have uh, issues on getting, but uh, they will get a good smartphone because they know that it's going to be coming with you, especially because they want their words with clans uh, to be run on their phones. So. It's called. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> have you ever played with words with clans? I don't think I've ever played words with clans. Well, is that a should. thing? Yeah, it is. It is. So, so uh, did Google Glass look in the reality? Uh, I'm sorry. Where was I? Oh, yeah, you kept throwing me off. So did Google <laughs> Glass look into the reality of public VR? Um, what, did, what did I mean by that? 
<laughs> Man, you're throwing me off here. So uh, let's let's take a look at Google Glass. Uh, did uh, did they show us the reality of public VR? I think that's where I was going with that. Maybe it was the fifteen hundred dollar price tag that PM uh, brought it to its knees. Um, still, if it was five hundred dollars, would Glass have still been around a lot longer? I think the answer actually is no. People do like new and shiny, but might not buy into it. Uh, they have they like the idea of having it, but it, it's not, you know, it, they have to buy their smartphone. And they're going to buy a good smartphone. Most of the people, some people buy flip phones, but most people will buy a good smartphone because they want something that, that can happen. So, and of course, tablets then uh, fall into the wayside when it comes to that. And of course, we're seeing, you know, with the market share coming out and, and, and saying the tablets aren't as as lucrative as they thought that they were going to be um it's a it's very we see the trend so other devices fall into that same trend as a tablet and that includes vr headsets um so people do like new shiny but uh might not buy into it uh further a big bulky system that sits on top of your head uh, might not might be as inhibiting as a pair of glasses or a large cup headphones. I mean, I hated my glasses. I don't wear my glasses. I wear contacts because, you know, and some people will get LASIK just to get rid of the glasses. Do they really want a VR headset sitting on top of their head, messing up their hair and, and stuff like that? It's a, they'd rather have smaller unobtrusive items sitting on their heads if they have that happen. So if we can turn a smartphone into a VR unit with a simple piece of cardboard, that makes me wonder if people will shell out another $500 for a standalone headset. Um, would it replace a TV or become a companion? Now, if it replaces the TV, I could see them actually uh, spending the $2,000 for five individual headsets for a family of four plus a uh, guest uh, that comes around. But if you could still do the same thing with your phone, why, why invest into it? <laughs> It's a good point. It's a good point. Um, and I know that's one of the things that, that, uh, Gizmag, uh, article was talking about is saying like, it's kind of useless to make a standalone VR headset if it has all the power in the headset, because that's basically just going to be yeah. another mobile phone. Exactly. So the, the headsets, you know, make a lot, a lot of sense for that. So reusing what you've got, um, might be where it goes. Yeah. Um, there's a couple other ideas there that they pose. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and and uh, it would, but uh, the main the main question is, uh, well, I guess the biggest question is what is the price point when it comes to a VR headset? Because I know five hundred dollars is going to be a tough sell for a lot of people. Uh, and then if you go two hundred dollars, you're probably going to get something with a a low end core, low end graphics. You know, kind of like these fifty-dollar tablets. I did. Uh, I did a review on a few months ago. They're not in HD, so uh, but they they work. But you know, they're not going to be that full experience you need when it comes, especially when it comes to the VR. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. But anyway, what are your thoughts on that? Glad you asked. So uh, I try. You know, I don't want to keep you involved in this whole thing. You know, you're you're basically saying, or you know, that maybe. Maybe it's going to be a while. Yeah. Uh, and I, I can't argue on the time. I think that it, it could be a while, but I think it might be faster than you're thinking. So uh, it reminds me of smartphones. It used to be that smartphones were really only for geeks. Uh, other you know, people thought they were too weird and they were kind of pointless. And you know, why would I get one of that? It's, and it's really expensive. Oh, yeah. Pre, um, pre but now they're commonplace. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everybody has a smartphone. When my mom has a smartphone, I'm telling you, everybody has a smartphone. Uh, people are so that proves people are willing to adopt new technology that even a few years ago was considered way too geeky. But here's the key: it has to be worthwhile. Uh, watching TV, uh, like or a movie on some sort of private theater, and saying, "Oh, well, that's you know, that's what you get with it." Probably not enough, even though that does have certain benefits. You know, you can be two people can be uh, watching two different things at once. But right now people kind of do that with two TVs. I know a lot of um, people that they have multiple TVs in their house, even if yeah. it's just, you know, two people living there. Um, 
I think that one of the things that will actually push VR forward is video games. You know, first person shooters are a huge industry and they have a this massive following. Um, you know, when Halo or Call of Duty comes out, mm -hmm. like, it seems like everybody's talking about it and everybody's playing it. Um, you know, not just kids, um, but, you know, grown adults. Right. So huge industry, huge, huge, huge. So I think if that can be perfected, that'll be one aspect that'll help push it forward. And those people will probably be more the early adopters of like, until you've played Halo with VR, like you haven't really played it, um, that kind of thing. But I think what'll turn it on for everybody else, the real nut to crack, as it were, is the social stuff social feeds. So Facebook, Twitter, those are the two big juggernauts that everyone's always talking about. Um, but right now there's really no advantage to having VR, right? You've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, no one's saying, man, I want to experience Facebook and VR. Uh, at least right now, somebody is eventually going to come up with a really great idea of how do you look at tweets in VR of like, wow, you could see tweets and then you could just kind of oh, I want to see more tweets on, you know, this tag and it kind of blows out and you're kind of looking at all the tweets and you're just kind of sitting there reading instead of scrolling, you know, with your thumb, you're just kind of sitting there reading stuff. And, you know, it's a, it's a very different experience, but I don't think that it'd be that far off. I think once people got used to it um, and they experienced it, it might be better. Facebook could do the same thing where you're seeing what all your friends are doing. Yeah. Um, or maybe you're traveling around some sort of virtual world and looking at all the posts of like, oh, hey, here's Disney World. And look at all these posts all your friends are doing from over there. And you're like, oh, yeah, neat. Let me see those. And you kind of pull them up to you. And you're like, wow, there's lots of stuff going on here. Oh, that picture looks neat. What was that about? Okay. And this, oh, this video looks cool. What was that about? And you can do that all much easier in VR than maybe on a computer. Okay. Because you just have this more immersive view. Um, so what leads to that? So that's consuming all of this content. But how are people going to actually share VR? Well, um, I think that's going to be the next big challenge is people started, there has to be enough VR content that people will get something out of it. Cause yeah, looking at pictures and stuff is nice in VR, but really being in the environment. So if I could share a VR experience for my upcoming trip, I'm sure there'd be a lot more interest from people that actually had VR headsets. Cause yeah. they say, you mean I can basically walk where he walked and kind of see what he saw. Cause he told, he told us about it and he posted pictures, but I want to like be there and just kind of look around and, mm -hmm. you know, just like, like I'm there. And once you've got VR, even something like Google cardboard, you can do that. Um, and I might, I'll make this analogy. It used to be that uh, Facebook and Twitter were mostly text and it was all these, you know, like, hey, here's what we did today. Oh, it was so much fun uh, being out in the snow with my kids. And we had a great time. You know, we love snow days or whatever. That's not what people do anymore. People post pictures. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you just pull out your phone, that thing you're carrying anyway. You take a picture, you post that, and you're like, having fun on our snow day. And that's it. And you're done. And everyone enjoys that a lot more because they don't want to read that whole paragraph about what you did, but yeah. you show them a picture. Um, it's like it's worth a thousand words. And then um, people can be interacting with each other a lot faster and it's just more enjoyable. And I think that's what we'll see eventually. Um, but first people have to start like somebody like the geeks have to start posting these VR experiences and say, Oh yeah, here's what, here's a video of, my experience, but it's in VR. So you can look out on your computer. It's okay. But if you get this VR headset, it's like a whole nother level. Um, and I think that's, that's one step that'll start to lead to this mass adoption. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, people pulling out pictures instead of writing a, a, a text, as you said, picture worth a thousand words. And I'm, I'm totally, I, I'm, I'm totally on board on that. I, you know, I can't tell you how many pictures I've taken in the last year that, it, you know, five, 10 years ago, if I, when I didn't have a smartphone, I didn't take those pictures. I just experienced life, I guess, or something. Yeah. Um, oh, then you'd write about it later. Like people would get back and say, oh, the concert was awesome. Yeah. Uh, like 
the stage was cool yeah. and the, this he came down really close to me and you know or whatever yeah now you'll get you're getting this like 15 second video and yeah the audio is horrible but you're like yeah. you you get enough of that experience that you're like wow that was really cool to be there and now i'm kind of jealous of them and the first person that tells me if i if they go to a concert and say how's the concert and say oh, i don't know my arm is all sore i'm gonna slap them because they probably <laughs> had that that phone up in the air uh, uh, and, and not experiencing I hate that. that. Guy. I hate that guy. Just hold it. Like, I'm okay with people. Like you want to take a picture, like, Oh man, they're starting the show. Let's take pictures or, Oh, I want to get a video of this, you know, this one song. Cause this is my, my favorite song. But like you see these people that it's like, they just sit there and they just hold their camera up mm -hmm. the whole time. Yeah. And the microphone is horrible on those things. It does not pick up. They're going to get home. They're going to say, yes, I got this concert. And then they're going to start playing and they're going to be like, this sounds horrible. Oh yeah. well. And like and they'll they'll get rid of it. And it'll be like you just ruined the view for somebody for, you know, an hour and a half for a video you're and not you're gonna not watch. Even, yeah. Yeah. And you're not going to do it. Like, and I'll, I'll tell you more. something, you know, uh, of course I bring higher end cameras to mm -hmm. events. And uh and and granted, you know, I've I've been I've been uh I've been playing with this success from Ver, uh from Verizon. Well, Apple, but uh, it's on Verizon's network. And I did, when I was at uh, NAMM, uh, North American Music uh, Merchants, where they show off the new music gear, I used this phone to do a lot of the video um, using uh, on what's called an Allo clip, which actually allows me to uh, put lenses on so I can zoom in and, and, and fisheye and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it's smaller and more compact, but... I wished uh, for like when I when I did the video of Toto um, doing uh, Rosanna, I would have rather had my main camera there because it would have had a lot better picture on the whole thing, and rather than my phone. So it's not mm -hmm. it's not totally, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about VR and a couple good points that you mentioned. First of all, the TV replacing the TV. That's that you know if it replaces the TV, surefire it's going to be in every hope. Simple as that, because of the fact that the TV is that home hub that everybody wants to be around the TV. But now the living room will have a new experience because there's going to be no main box that everybody's going to watch. Everybody's going to be on headsets, and uh, that'll be an inch. That would be an interesting change. And then they'd have to figure out things like you know how do you figure out the cable box situation because now mm -hmm. most cable companies, if you have cable TV. You have a box now. You have also also have over the air. Um, how would you set up the tuner or anything like that? Um, that that would be interesting to do that. But if you can immerse it, like I said a couple of weeks ago, if you if 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 you're sitting in a movie with a VR headset and you're even and they even have it where you're you're just watching the screen and then all of a sudden Tie Fighters fly in from here or there or whatever or you know there's an action fight scene and there's debris flying to the left and the right of you and that headset helps bring that environment out then people will get into it and and I think that it'll start in uh, I don't know I don't want to say a movie house but I'll say a VR house you know mm -hmm. a place you'll go to experience VR until you're ready to get your own uh, the other one is virtual presence and I've seen a couple of these already in uh in uh, at, at ces they did have somebody uh rolling around in one of those uh uh virtual presence devices um where you could be somewhere else and it's got the box but with virtual reality I instead of the camera being forward the camera would be a 360 camera on top of that presence the little segue looking mm -hmm. thing and then you could actually see all around you while you're moving forward so if you're, if you're getting ready to run into somebody or if you're seeing somebody running into you, you can kind of alert them, hey, hey, I'm here, and go from there. So uh, I can see that. But once again, we're, we're, talking, we're talking a few years down the road when it comes to this. But, uh, the, main, but the real question, do you think that, um, that VR headsets will be really adopted within the next, let's say, 365 days? Because Oculus Rift's coming out very very soon samsung's coming out soon you know will will people yeah. buy into this uh, so i don't think it'll have mass adoption in the next year i think at best it'll have like that maybe that first level of the video game um the video game kind of enthusiast that really wants uh, a better experience there yeah i think 
I think it's, it's like a lot of things, like I kind of said, you got to have some early adopters that can help evangelize the product and also help push what it is that people want. Like people that use it are going to say, this is great. I have games in it. What else can I do with it? And they'll be like, Facebook, Hey, can you make up Facebook for VR? I mean, you've got the Oculus, right? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like you guys are invested in this. Shouldn't you be investing in doing some sort of Facebook interface for VR? It can be pretty crude. You'll have time to refine it, but at least get the early adopters saying, oh yeah, I love Facebook and VR because I can see all the 360 videos that my friends are making. Yeah. Um, and I can just look at, you know, their pictures and it's really quickly, you know, really, you know, quick to scan a bunch of stuff and just be like, ooh, that picture, I want that one, you know, kind of pull that forward instead of, okay, hold on, let me scroll through this big list or try to look at all the pictures on this little tiny display. Yeah. Um, it'll be, um, I think it'll be good. Uh, so yeah, probably not in the next 365 days, but I think we'll see some of those early adopters uh, get on board. Um, I'm even thinking about it uh, because I've got this trip coming up uh, where I won't be able to go back really easily you know, next month or next year or whatever, you know, it'd, it'd be, it'd be uh, quite a bit of work to put together. Um, I'm thinking about maybe picking up uh, one of those 360 degree cameras or, you know, some sort of a little consumer grade, obviously, you know, not professional grade. I don't probably can't uh, invest a, you know, yeah. a couple of grand in this, but uh, there are con some consumer grade products uh, that do video and that I could then post up on YouTube. Uh, and that way people could have some of that experience of like, Hey, what was it actually like on the trip? You know, what did it, what did it look like? What was it like, um, walking around or driving around or whatever? That, that makes me think of the days when, uh, when people went on trips and then they had the slideshow and you'd go over to their house and watch the slideshow presentation. Could mm -hmm. you imagine that as a VR system and like you put the headset on and, and then everybody be walking you know, the streets of London or uh, Vegas yeah. or, or whatnot and get an idea of that, but they'd still be on your tour or your, mm -hmm. your memories rather than uh, experience in themselves, but it would be definitely different. And yeah, I've also been thinking about getting a uh, 360 degree camera. Uh, and uh, I, I've looked at a couple of them. I'm still not totally impressed with, uh, with what they have, but it's a lot better than what I have, which is nothing. So yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's, and I, I think it varies. I think the quality varies. I think it's, and, but you know, people have to start with something. Um, and it's like everything else. Like if you look at the original camera phones from yeah. five, six years ago, uh, 10 years ago, maybe on some of the original ones, they were horrible. And people would be like, I don't think anyone will ever like phone pictures will never replace point and shoot cameras. People, everyone has to buy a point and shoot camera. Yeah. And now Tell you, I don't yeah. like, why would I have a point and shoot? Like, this phone takes as good a pictures as a point and shoot camera did, you know, 10 years ago or even better than that. So mm -hmm. eh, I'll just use this for my point and shoot. Now I might get a, you know, I have a better camera uh, for doing more, you know, zoom and, yeah. you know, things like that. But um, yeah, I was like, I'm not going to buy a point and shoot camera probably ever again. Yeah. I I'm, I'm not, I'm not totally on board with that because <laughs> there's still some issues with, with, you could tell the difference between a smartphone photo and a DSLR photo. Let's just put it that way. So DSLR, yes, they're definitely um, high quality portable cameras that uh, you can carry around. But uh, I would say for what most point and shoot cameras were uh, or are, like, why would you spend 150 bucks on a point and shoot these days? Like, I, I personally don't see the need because yeah. it just seems like for like for 150 bucks, it's just not going to be that. It's not going to be any better probably than my cell phone. Okay. And uh, yeah, but when it comes to VR, it's it's going to be the same thing, right? So yeah, VR like it's probably not going to be on your cell phone anytime soon. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool if there was a little attachment that could get you, you know, VR or to get some little lens on there. Oh, there um, is, like you were talking about. Yeah, there there is a there is a lot. There are a couple companies that have lenses out there. You just pop them right on your phone, and then you, yeah, you hold your phone like that. Nice and flat, mm. and then it does the whole 360 thing. But yeah, you know, once again, you're you're recording to your phone. Um, you're using your battery from your phone, and mm -hmm. uh, and this and that. So it's it's a it, it's just a question of where the uh, the battery life. If you want to waste it on getting a quick video of something, or if you need it, if you need your phone to actually make a phone call or something like that. So yeah, 
Yeah. But, so yeah, it'll start off as uh, separate devices and who knows, it may converge and all become part of a phone someday. Oh yeah, as batteries mm-hmm. get better and technology gets better, um, la power, uh, less power and, and more more power mm-hmm. and less power. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. then yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see it merge, no problem. But for now... For now, it's a it's it's a great idea, and and, and we'll, there are going to be early adapters. We're going to see a lot of people uh, with these gear VRs on them or whatever, and uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, we'll see. And of course, the price point is the biggest thing. You know, yeah. Uh, anything yeah. if if you can get it on and under a hundred dollars and have a good uh, VR headset, then people will go for it. But anything over a hundred dollars, they start to go. Well, you know, that's a that's a that's a cell phone bill. That's a that's an that's a, a gas and electric bill. That's a you know, that's part of my rent at that point. Yeah. So and this article didn't say getting back to the article um, what the Google VR headset actually is because they haven't revealed that. Yeah. Um, one theory I saw is it could be that the actual hardware, like the video card and all that stuff, isn't really in the device. Like it's just a display and a couple of, you know, you know, a minor graphics card uh, and some Wi-Fi radios or other radios. And then it'll be talking to the home base. And so your main computer will be what actually renders everything and it streams it to the device. And so the device will last a long time and you can upgrade the hardware or use different computers. And that would make the hardware for the headset a lot cheaper because it doesn't have to have, yeah. you know, the GPS in it and, you know, the cell phone radios and all that stuff and the expensive graphics card and all the storage. Cause it's basically just a monitor yeah. uh, with enough sensors and everything to, you know, um, to be, yeah. you know, not all back, which would but, be, which would be totally perfect for anybody, you know, cause I'm, I'm guessing, um, in the next year, we will see some stores pop up where you go to get a virtual reality experience. And if they're, if they're tethered to the, to the computer, even if it's a wireless tether, you can also set it up. So if they leave the building, the, the VR headset will be completely useless. Um, yeah. But you go in and you get your experience, you pay your $10 for the experience, and then you move on and go from there. So um, I don't know. There, there's still a lot of stuff up in the air. But the, the, the biggest question is, is this another mobile device that people will, will say, I want? Or people that say, hey, you know, uh, I, I I don't even want the tablet that I have. I don't want my laptop, my tablet, and my smartphone. I just want my smartphone. Mm-hmm. And I think that's mm-hmm. where things go uh, when it comes to stuff like that. Is is it's just too much mobile, too much devices for that. So, but yeah. uh, you know, people out there, you, you guys, you probably have your opinion. Let us know, uh, Jeff at wearabletoday.com, Luke at wearabletoday.com. What do you think uh, when it comes to uh, VR? Would would you are you an adopter or are you going to say, yeah, you know, it's nice, but you know, it's not going to impact my life so, that much. So I'm just going to kind of uh, be the kid in the can uh, outside the candy store, looking in at all the confections happening. So let us know, Jeff at wearabletoday.com and Luke at wearabletoday.com. So that does bring us to the end of the show. That's all I'd say on that. So. Luke White, yeah. <laughs> tell everybody where they can find you. So you can find me on Twitter, Luke Luca, in the lower third here, or you can find me on Google Plus, plus Luke Wallace on Google Plus, uh, Instagram, Luke Luca, YouTube, Luke Wallace. I kind of go back and forth, obviously. Uh, I don't have my branding quite locked down. Uh, Luke Luca 2 on YouTube is my username, uh, but short URL, Luke Wallace. Send me a tweet. Would you watch... 360 content that I take from my vacation. You know, I wouldn't post anything that was like, here is an hour long video of something of me wandering around, you know, this slow, you know, meandering. It's like, but I might say, hey, here's a couple minutes of an interesting place. Here's a couple minutes. Would that be interesting to you? Would you get out your Google Cardboard and, you know, find it in YouTube and watch the video? Like, let me know. All right. And of course, you can find me over at Geeky Zine, Think Magazine, put in a geek. You've got me, Jeffrey Powers. Um, feel free to tweet me and say, hi, how are you doing? Or Bobbity Boo or whatever you want to say. That's, you know, and, and you can del- definitely tell me what your thoughts on VR headsets are there and go from there. So 
couple show notes. Uh, of course, we're going to have a show next week. We're uh, coming up on our next big break coming up in, oh, let's see. We got three shows. No, this is 97. We got 98, 99. Uh, we've got two shows left before the next season. We're going to take a small break after that, after episode 99, and uh, and get ready for our 100th episode coming up very soon. Um, and, of course, it'll be in uh, later March as um, Luke's going to be on vacation. I'm going to be going to South by Southwest for a couple weeks, and we're just, uh, you know, we're, we're going to immerse ourselves in wearable technology because that's what we do, right? That's what we do. Yeah, all the time. Exactly. So, all right. Well, Luke, thank you very much for uh, being on the show once again for three seasons. I appreciate it very much. No problem. Thank you for having me. This is always a good time. Yeah, good time. Good times, great oldies. Or, no, wait. No. Wearable Tech. Anyway, this has been <laughs> episode number 97 of Wearable Today. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. Go ahead and subscribe over on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe on Stitcher or wherever you're watching or listening to the show, too. And uh, don't forget to uh, let us know what you think about it. Go to our social uh, channels, Wearable Today for Twitter, Wearable Today for Facebook, This Week in Glass for YouTube. Thanks a lot for watching and listening. It's been another episode of Wearable Today, and we will see you next week with another episode. Geek out, folks. <laughs>